The Life and Sad Ending of Jerry G. Bishop Jerry G. Bishop, born Jairus Samuel Gahn, was born August 3, 1936, in Chicago to Russian Jewish parents. He graduated from Wright Junior College, the University of Illinois at Urbana. In 1961, he got his start in radio at WNMP in Evanston, hosting the Morning Drive program. He also worked part-time on stations in Rockford and Springfield. In 1962, he was hired at WPGC AM-FM in Washington, D.C., where he stayed for a year before being hired on at Cleveland Giant KYW as a nighttime DJ. He had used his real name of Jerry Gunn at his previous jobs, but began using his name Jerry G at WPGC. KYW program director Ken Draper requested that he uses the same name. During his three-year stint at KYW, Jerry G. toured with the Beatles as a reporter for the Group W and NBC radio stations on their 1964 and 1965 tours, hosted a weekly dance party program, Jerry G. and the Co. When Ken Draper was program director at Chicago's WCFL from 1965 to 1968, he hired Bishop in the 1967. Draper then asked him to pick a last name to go with the Jerry G name that he had been using. He and his wife flipped through the Cleveland phone book and together they settled on the name Bishop. In 1969, Jerry G became a staff announcer and the host of an afternoon local version of the movie call-in contest show, Dialing for Dollars on WFLD-TV, which was also located in Marina City, which is now the House of Blues building. The affiliation with the WFLD would lead to Jerry inventing his most famous role as Fen Gooley on Channel 32's Screaming Yellow Theater in 1971. Bishop was the announcer of the Friday night scary movie anthology Screaming Yellow Theater, when he had the idea to create a live host for the program, the character that became known as Fenguli, at the first a Bella Lugosi-type voice under a title card, and over Link Ray's 1958 hit, Rumble, then on screen in the guise of a green-haired, green-bearded, guitar-strumming hippie who slept in a psychedelic painted coffin and told corny, vaudeville-era jokes with a horror movie skew. The title show was derived from Screaming Yellow Zonkers, a yellow, sugary glazed popcorn snack first produced in the 1960s. Sven Gulli was a pun on the name Svengali and Ghoul. The show and character provided the wildly successful. The show was lasted from 1970 to 1973 when parent company Field Communicators sold WFLD-TV to Kaiser Broadcasting, which chose to replace theater with a similar show popular in Cleveland, The Ghoul Show. After leaving WFLD, Bishop would be hired by WMAQ as their morning drive personality. He also worked on the station's television outlet hosting Chicago Camera, a Sunday afternoon variety program. He also anchored the Today in Chicago segment of NBC's Today Show. He would work for WMAQ until 1975, when WMAQ changed their formats from MOR Talk to Country and replaced their entire announcing staff. Bishop remained in the Windy City for a short time afterward, acting as Director of Corporate Affairs for the National Easter Seal Society of Chicago. In August of 1978, he headed west to San Diego and KMFB, where he assumed the co-host chair of the long-running morning talk program, Sun Up San Diego. 
His co-host until 1983 was Danuta Reichlow. He collected three local Emmy Awards and a National Press Club Award for his work on the show, which he co-hosted for 12 years until the cancellation in 1990. In 1980, he served as a local moderator of the discussion segment in the innovative Norman Lear project, The Baxters. The segment was titled The Baxters with Bishop. In 1992, he worked at adult contemporary K-pop and wound up broadcasting career with a three-year stint hosting the show on WRLL, Real Oldies 1690 an oldies extended AM station aimed at the Chicago area, beginning in 2003. Away from his radio-television pursuits, Bishop and his family operated two Chicago-themed restaurants in San Diego's Seaport Village. Sadly, Bishop died on September 15, 2013, at the University of California, San Diego Medical Center, of a heart attack. He was 77 years old. He was survived by his wife of 49 years, Liz, and his children, Melissa and Christopher. He was cremated and the ashes were sent to his family.